Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this week's episode, I want to talk about mastering meetings with your stakeholders, ways that you can demonstrate leadership in resilience. This theme is, or this episode rather, is really about effective communication and leadership as a resilience leader. Um, And I want to really focus on the importance of establishing and growing your credibility by demonstrating your leadership and subject matter expertise as you meet with stakeholders. Here's the reason why I think that this is so important. As you've heard me say in other episodes of our podcast, one of the things that I hear about a lot from resilience leaders is that business leaders don't take you or your program seriously, that you struggle to get time with leaders to really focus on the things that are important related to resilience, that you're not able to obtain buy-in, that folks don't want to um, participate in the requirements of your program. And I have long argued that a lot of this is a self-inflicted harm, that we have challenges with this because we don't do a good job establishing and maintaining our credibility. I'll give you an example of this. Several months ago, I was assisting a client and they invited me to a continuity planning meeting with one of their major stakeholders. These stakeholders uh, were, it was a group within the organization that was led by a vice president um, who actually reported to the boss over the resilience leader. So there was a direct connection in their part of the organization. And it was a big team. It was uh, a group that ran an operations center that was really critical to this organization's ability to manage workload and allocate workload across their organization. So it was a pretty important group that ran 24-7 in this high-intensity industry that this group is in. And so I was expecting what I would expect if I was running this meeting, which is that there had been an agenda with goals communicated in advance, that what we were doing was well understood, that the resilience leader was gonna strongly facilitate this meeting and we would head towards the outcomes that were defined uh, for the purpose of this meeting. And instead of what I got was this rambling introduction by the resilience leader, followed by asking, what do you think we should do? And the meeting really fell apart. It was a very challenging conversation. And as the consultant, I got put on the spot because they were like, well, why are you here? And what what is it that you're trying to achieve? And it wasn't even my meeting. Uh, so m- clearly, a, you know, I, I didn't do a very good job of making sure up front that I understood what we were walking into. But more importantly, it's a great example of just a poorly managed effort that impacted that leader's credibility and thus the program's credibility. So I want to take you through just some thoughts on mastering stakeholder meetings about ways that you can demonstrate leadership and preparedness and subject matter expertise as a resilience leader. The first one is that coming into the meeting, you should know who the stakeholders are. You want to research them and understand their priorities, their pain points, and what they value most. What are the things that you really want to get out of this meeting? And then develop a clear agenda outline the key topics that you're going to talk about, whether that's, hey, the purpose of this is to create a new business continuity plan for the first time, or the purpose of this meeting is to update your business continuity plan for this year, or the purpose of this meeting is to share with you our priorities as a resilience program and talk about your priorities and understand the intersection of those. Whatever that agenda is, whatever those outcomes are, You want to make sure that you've defined that in advance. And then you want to make sure your agenda is aligned with organizational goals. You want to show how resilience initiatives support the broader business strategies of your organization. After you've developed the agenda, you want to communicate this agenda in advance. I would send this agenda at least a day or two ahead of the meeting. And you want to provide context for every item on the agenda. Why is it relevant and what decisions or input are needed? Like sometimes you have things on the agenda because you want to discuss them. And so I preface those with discussion, colon, the topic that we're going to talk about. Or Sometimes I'm providing an update. And so I write the agenda that way, that there'll be an update from Bright Path about the following topics. 
I like to just be really clear about this up front. And then I would encourage stakeholders to add their points of interest because that creates a collaborative atmosphere up front, even before you get into the meeting. The third thing, and I can't stress this third one enough, is that if it's your meeting, you have to manage the meeting effectively. So start with a quick recap of the agenda and the objectives for the meeting. As you're leading the conversation, keep it on topic. Use basic time management techniques to keep the meeting focused. Encourage conversation and active participation. You want to make sure you're asking for input from stakeholders, address their concerns, and validate their contributions. And fourth, whether you're faking it or not, lead the meeting with confidence. You want to use your expertise to direct conversations, but be open to feedback about where the meeting is going and how the meeting is going. The fourth thing is to ensure you have clarity and alignment. So when you get to the end of the meeting, summarize the key points, the key decisions you've made, and the next steps towards the end of this meeting. You wanna clarify responsibilities and timelines to make sure that you're maintaining momentum. What is next? What are you going to own? What are you expecting them to do? And what are the agreements that you've reached about the things that need to happen next? And then check for alignment, so confirm that the stakeholders understand and support this agreed upon direction that you've established collaboratively. Number five is the follow-up and reinforcement of that meeting. I would send a concise follow-up email within 24 hours. Include minutes of the meeting, action items, and deadlines, or even any immediate answers if there's a quick hit win that you can achieve in a very straightforward way. Second is this is a great chance to reiterate the value of resilience in meeting those organizational objectives. So make that connection back to those objectives and the outcomes that you established in that meeting preparation and agenda. And then lastly, as appropriate, provide ongoing updates. Make sure you're keeping the stakeholders informed about progress and about adjustments that are necessary to plans. So if I summarize this, I want to emphasize the importance of as a resilience leader, that you are effectively preparing for managing and following up on meetings that you are leading or that your team is leading. Make sure that you are taking the time, take, take these lessons to heart and uh, use this to refine your meeting approach and build stronger relationships with your stakeholders uh, and use this as an opportunity to really think about your approach see how you can adjust, and then use that to continue to enhance your credibility as the resilience leader, and in doing so, enhance the credibility of your program. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel, and here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.